Learning Objectives After completing this digital module, learners will be able to understand about various economic systems of India. Learn how after attaining independence, the statesmen of the country chose the mixed system of economy in the country. Understand how in accordance with the condition of India, five-year planning segregated the priorities of functions. Understand how during fourth five-year plan in agriculture, the Green Revolution was conceptualized. Understand how self-reliance was achieved through the increase of crops yielding in agriculture through the aid of Green Revolution. Learn during initial period of five-year planning how it was endeavoured to contribute in GDP's growth through the cultivation. Learn how heavy metal and engineering industries got the preference during initial five-year planning, which was directly related with nation building. Learn in which ways the land reforms have been conducted under the effective guidance and overview of the governments during the planning period. Learn how through various industrial policy resolutions, the interests of domestic players were assured from the severity of global competition. Understand the objectives and reasons behind the emergence of new economic policy in India during 1991. Economic Systems and Planning Diversified Economic Systems The scarce resources having distributed within an economy determines various economic systems. Basically, in the market-driven economy, the business factors become very competitive and thus the social and human needs of the poor people are neglected. Secondly, in the command economy, while the government owning the means of resources lacks to maintain the supply and demand cycle in their natural way. Mixed economy, Indian model. But in mixed economy, the government tries to mitigate the social and economic need for the poor. On the other hand, the private ownership and the innovation for the economic development is also considered to be encouraged in the same pace. The coexistence of large public sector with big private sector has transformed the economy into a mixed one. The industrial policies of 1948 and 1956 formulated by the Indian government have made the provision of such coexistence. Some basic and heavy industries are being run under the public sector. However, with the liberalization of Indian economy, the scope of private sector has furthered enhanced. Need of the Our Planning Commission The Planning Commission was set up on 15th March 1950. Primitively, it was formulated to design policy direction to influence the resource allocation from budget and to oversee the performance on a standard framework for comparative assessment of all the states from time to time. In short, it was doing the job both that of a think tank and the function of allocation of planning resources among the central ministries and different states of India judiciously to allocate the resources. The Goal of Five-Year Plans The Growth Story The first five-year plan was one of the most important because it had a great role in the launching of Indian development after independence. Thus, it strongly supported agriculture production and it also launched the industrialization drive in the country. 
it built a particular system of mixed economy with a great role for the public sector with an emerging welfare state as well as a growing private sector the economic growth has received the strongest priority in all of the plans due to low per capita income and the consequent low rate of saving and capital formation indian economy required a boost this objective seems to be totally justified particularly in the context of economic stagnation during the two centuries of british rule the key sectors were agriculture industry power and transport through rapid economic development the country aimed at increasing national and per capita incomes thus poverty was thought to be removed and the standard of living would be improved modernization and self reliance to achieve this goal the fifth plan aimed at an increasing production of food grains while emphasizing the increase in exports the plan stressed the need for establishing import substitute industries as an important factor of economic self reliance equal distribution of resources in india's socio political setup vast inequalities was already existed indian plans thus aimed at reducing such inequalities so that the benefits of economic development spread to the poor the objective of removal of poverty got its clear cut enunciation only in that plan for the first time development in agricultural sector scopes of the agricultural development the chief objective of first five year plan was to restore the disequilibrium of the country being freed from the colonial rule in this aspect in some of the earlier plans some long lasting projects were taken like irrigation and several river dam constructions an estimated amount of 1960 crore rupees of investment was made during the first plan of which 601 crore rupees as nearly 31% was allocated for agriculture during fourth five year planning two main objectives were settled as to provide the conditions necessary for a sustained increase of about 5% per annum over the next decade secondly to enable the sector of the rural population as large as possible to participate in the mainstream development and distribute its benefits equally land reforms land reform constituted the most important package of measures to improve the economic condition of agricultural tenants it aimed at the redistribution of land ownership in favor of the cultivating class regulation and rationalization of rent improving the size of farms and providing security of tenure in order to transfer in traditional agriculture and raise cultivators to new heights measures of land sealing the sealing on land holdings was intended firstly to meet the land needs of the landless secondly to reduce the glaring inequalities in land ownership so that it may lead to development of cooperative rural economy and thirdly to enlarge self employment in owned land as distinguished from subletting and tenant cultivation green revolution in india what is green revolution the introduction of high yielding varieties of seeds after 1965 and the increased use of fertilizers and irrigation 
are known collectively as the Green Revolution, which provided the increase in production needed to make India self-sufficient in food grains and thus improving agriculture in India. For mines in India, once accepted as inevitable, have not returned since the introduction of Green Revolution crops. The term as coined not so being specific to India, but an occasion it had been most successful in the country. Ensuring the marketed surplus in food grains. We know that the Green Revolution continued with this quantitative expansion of farmlands. Similarly, the double cropping was a primary feature of the same. By the aid of intensive irrigation, two crop seasons in large and small farms were happened successfully. Dams were built to arrest large volumes of natural monsoon water, which were earlier being wasted. Simple irrigation techniques were also adopted. This envisaged the way of marketable and marketed surplus of food grains within a brief duration. The portion of agricultural produce being sold in the market by the farmers is usually called marketed surplus. In consequence of selling a good portion of crops in the market, the price of food grains declined relative to other items of consumption. Intervention of Technology in Green Revolution in India It is evident that the research and development of new agricultural technology underpinned the Green Revolution. With the advent of modern tools of biotechnology, it has become possible to address the challenges of agriculture like climate change and others which have been difficult to overcome by the conventional methods. Industry and Trade Industrial Development in Different Planning Methods The real growth and industrial development in India started during the period of five-year plans. During first five-year plan, FYP, 1951 to 1956, the importance was given on existing industries like textiles, sugar, paper, cement and so on. During second FYP, 1956 to 1961, the priority was shifted to heavy metal industries and fertilizer producing units. At the time of third FYP, that is 1961 to 1966, the importance was given on heavy metal, engineering, fossil fuel fertilizers, machine tools and others. During the fourth FYP, that is 1970 to 1975, the agro-based industries, chemical industries, specialized alloy steel, other machine tools and automobile sectors were prioritized. In 5th FYP, that is 1975 to 1980, steel industries, chemical and drug manufacturing were taken care of. In 6th and 7th FYP, that is 1980 to 1990, railway wagons, automobile, electric equipment, chemical and cement were prioritized. The appropriate backup of training was set up. Service sector, banking and insurance. It has been important to realize that the constraints in the industrial and agricultural sectors and the natural advantage of India in service sector had led to services, led growth of the economy. While the limitations in the other two sectors need to be removed, as is being attempted now, there is no need to expect the hare to sleep for the tortoise to overtake it. 
Public and Private Sectors Contribution Industrial Policy Resolution that is IPRs The 1956 IPR policy continued to constitute the basic economic policy for a long time. It laid down three categories as the industries belonging to have exclusive responsibilities to state, progressively state-owned with future private enterprising and aspiring the futuristic development in the sector. Trade Policy and Import Substitution Industrialization What is Import Substitution Industrialization? Import Substitution Industrialization generally refers to policy that eliminates the import of the commodities and allows for the production in the domestic market. The objective of this policy is to bring about structural changes in the economy. The policy of import substitution is achieved through discrimination of capital goods against consumer goods by tariffs, quotas, exchange control barriers, exchange rate policies and fiscal and credit policies. For an example, in India, the tariffs on crude oil and naphtha are negligible while there is a duty of about 300% on most of the synthetic fibers. The duty on basic intermediates for producing these products varying between 100% to 200%. Furthermore, the imports of synthetic fabrics is totally banned. The imports of most of the petrochemical intermediate were restricted until now. However, the recent policy in India has relaxed the restrictions in some cases. The License Raj in India This refers to the period between 1947 and 1990 when the economy was centrally planned. Apparently, it needed approval from 80 agencies before a license to produce something could be obtained. A strict regime of regulation and governmental control on production and its various modes was prevalent during this time. Emergence of New Economic Policy in 1991 The thrust of the New Economic Policy has been towards creating a more competitive environment in the economy as a means to improving the productivity and efficiency of the system. This was to be achieved by removing the barriers to entry and the restrictions on the growth of firms. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Among various economic systems, India had chosen the mixed economy where private and public sector enterprises were categorized side by side. Through five-year planning period, we have seen two types of planning as basic plans and long-term perspective plans. Through the invention of high-yielding varieties of seeds, green revolution based in the sector of agriculture in the country. By the aid of green revolution, the country got the phase of self-reliance on the production of food grains. The heavy metal industries, mining aiding engineering industries and chemical products changed the scenario of industrial domain of the country during planning period. Through land reforms and the measures of land ceilings, government took the necessary steps to revive the conditions of small-scale farmers and agricultural landless labourers. Through various industrial policy resolutions, governments overviewed the import and export policies of the country 
in accordance with the developing domestic players inside the country. New economic policy in 1991 brought the essence of private ownership and fewer regulations in the functions of government in policy making.